Hey guys, still here and welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. Today, Arizona, USS Arizona, is going to get some revenge. This scenario was sent in by Anzac A1, a new content creator of the Naval Architect type. It's a special Patreon tier that allows you to send in a scenario for me to play on Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. Anzac, welcome. Today, the backstory. In an alternate timeline, during the attack on Pearl Harbor, one additional bomb hits the USS Arizona's forward magazine, but turns out to be a dud. However, the damage inflicted causes water to flood into the magazine. As a result, the final bomb hit that the Arizona sustains fails to detonate her forward magazine. Despite the ship taking on so much water that her main deck is nearly submerged, her crew is able to keep her afloat. It is now late August 1942. The refitted Arizona, with her small force of two heavy cruisers and four destroyers, has been deployed in support of the Guadalcanal campaign. Early one morning, after receiving reports of a small Japanese force nearby, one of the heavy cruiser scout planes locates the enemy. They're comprised of a single battleship, believed to be a Congo-class ship, along with several other smaller ships. In command of the USS Arizona is Captain Franklin Van Valkenburg, who was once oh, sorry, who was also in command at Pearl Harbor. Knowing that two Congo-class battleships were among the Japanese fleet that day, he decides that this is the moment for Arizona and her crew to take revenge and punish the Japanese for nearly sinking Arizona by sinking one of their battleships instead. The captain orders all hands to battle stations and turns to intercept the enemy. Now, I had to adjust the scenario a little bit because it called for my ships to have 1934 era, but the Arizona was actually launched in 1915. So um, by going for 1934 tech in-game, I was forced to use unlock all. Uh, it led to all sorts of weird hull designs and I could not get the cage masts that I wanted. Seeing that my enemy is a Congo-class ship, um, they were also launched in or around 1915. I've decided to change the era to 1915 to match. So, let's start on designing the USS Arizona, uh, which will not be an exact refit or an exact fit, because A, that's not possible in the game, and B, um, well, she's been refit. She has survived Pearl Harbor, gotten a few upgrades here and there, and she's now ready for a fight. Let's get to work. Um, when it comes to ships and hulls, I think this one is the best option because the Dreadnought uh, 2A is, well, not particularly fitting. So we're going to go with the Dreadnought hull, but Arizona did not have that much displacement. She had a maximum of 32,000 tons of displacement, but, well, 36 is the lowest I can go, so I'll try just not to use all of it. Her speed was a very, very modest 21 knots, and I'm going to stick to that because I think that they would probably not have overhauled her engines that much. And, uh, well, let's keep her on coal-fired boilers as well. Krupp 3 armor, she was, at some point, the most modern warship launched, I believe. So let's make sure that she reflects that with uh, an armor 3, or Krupp 3 armor. Armored Citadel, and especially considering that the crew was able to keep her afloat at Pearl Harbor, despite severe damage, I'm going to give her anti-flooding 3. Reinforced bulkheads 1. Uh, let's give her a modest auxiliary petrol engine. And let's start on the rest of her systems. Right over here on the far right, we have these super tall cage masts. Uh, they weren't that much to look at, but they do give you some fairly spectacular long-range accuracy. So let's put that on. And then for the secondary tower, she had another one of those. Maybe not exactly these, but I have to balance what is going to be feasible in game with what is actually, uh, well, let's say what is actually on the ship. I know that's not a very satisfactory answer, but well, such is life. Let's go with a bigger funnel, 58% engine efficiency. Induced boilers give me 100% engine efficiency. I want a standard barbette over there and another one here. While she might have been modernized, I am not going to do much about her armament. I'm going to still give her her 14-inch triples. Uh, because I think that while she might have had some overhauls, uh, replacing an entire turret, that's a pretty big order. It's a pretty tall order to do. What I will do is give her her 5-inch secondary armament. Now, she's supposed to have a ton of those things. 
Um, unfortunately, I cannot fit nearly as many, as, or at least not as casemates. Because she was supposed to have, I believe, 22 of these. Let me look that up. Confirmed. She was supposed to have 22 single 5-inch guns, 4 triple... Uh, sorry, four single three-inch guns, anti-air guns, as well as two 21-inch torpedo tubes. So let's say that those are uh, bow and stern. I just don't think the game is going to allow me 21-inchers, especially not in this era. And apparently all my guns have a poor field of fire now. I'm not sure how that came to be, because I installed the torpedo tubes and the game started saying, hey, uh, because you put something far underwater, now my fire... there. <laughs> because you put something far underwater. Now my firing arcs are bad for the rest. Right, of course they are. That makes no sense. Stereoscopic 3 rangefinder. And when it comes to her armor belt, she has 13 and a half. Again, this is one of those trade-offs where you go, okay, am I going to stick strictly to historical accuracy? Or am I going to try and make this an actual enjoyable battle in-game? And I'm going to try and sort of balance this out. She had 18 inches of armor on the turrets. Definitely her most heavily protected part. Um, with the displacement, I still have a little bit of room left. But not that much, because I'm already going over what I was planning for. But it's just... Well, it's hard to get this thing to work. It's hard to try and keep it balanced. I suppose I could kick off the auxiliary engine one, but that doesn't save me that much. It's just a hundred and something tons. It's not that much you can do. Um, let's not give her acoustics, because I don't think she would have had that. Maybe some singular five-inch turrets. The thing is that these might clash with the... I put on more guns and the f <laughs> I put on more guns and the poor field of fire warning goes away. Uh this game. <laughs> that makes no sense. Whatever. Uh yeah, this is a bit crowded. How many do I have now? All the way up. Oh, I'm getting there. Yeah, there we go. 12 single 5-inch casemates and 10 single 5-inch guns. I'm not going to bother with the 3-inch gun because it really doesn't matter that much. I have, despite what I wanted to try, I have almost maxed out the displacement. So be it. All right, let's give the Arizona some revenge on those that have wronged her. Quick overview of the battle lineup. I have a battleship, two heavies and four destroyers. They have two heavy cruisers. I also gave them two lights, four destroyers, and of course, their battleship. Which was supposed to be Congo-esque. <laughs> Whatever they threw together is not a Congo. Enemy to the north. Arizona, turn north. Do not launch torpedoes unless otherwise directed. Range, 7 kilometers. Norfolk and Oregon. Heavy cruisers with maximum bulkheads. No torpedo launchers, but they do have seven guns. Seven, whoa, seven inch guns, five inch casemates everywhere. These are going to be fantastic against their destroyers. Three inch guns, more three inch guns, two inch guns. Wow. And then we got the destroyers. Let's all have these in one group. Uh, and please make your way into one single battle line. Maximum bulkheads, very good. We have 5-inch gun on the bow and 3 triple launchers on the stern. They are fast torpedoes, so they will get easily detected. Let's not launch those unless otherwise directed. You gentlemen, I want you to follow the battleship. You're 24 and a half knots, my battleship is doing 21 at best speed. But her turning circle... Oh, I thought her turning circle would be better. It's not. Well, not as much as I would have hoped. Now I'll say it again, because I uh, do expect somebody to start saying it in the comments. I know this is not an exact replica of Arizona. It's a game, it's not a simulator, it's not naval art, and therefore I am restricted by what I can do with this editor. 
Therefore, it might not look exactly like the Arizona. It might look nothing like the Arizona, but I try and balance out the way that the ship behaves and acts in the game um, versus what it looked like in history. And I try to sort of line these things up. Now, let's see if we can find that enemy at uh, the north, because we have a Congo-ish <laughs> to take some revenge on. Uh, without radar, it's going to be taking a bit more time to try and spot them. So I have the DDs. Oh, they're not too poorly lined up today. Ah, contact. What sort of monstrosity have you thrown together today? Good lord. Is that enough guns for you? Uh, that is 18 13 inch guns, backed up by 8 single 8 inch casemates, as well as 6 5 inch guns and 2 4 inch guns. She might have a lot of main gun firepower. And her secondaries, especially the eights, will pull some very nasty shit against destroyers. But I imagine that because of her length, her turning circle is going to be pretty terrible. And I might be able to use that. Now the range is 15.9, my accuracy is terrible, and uh, at that, well, at that angle, that distance, I'm not sure if it's going to work that well. Torpedo range, 4.8. It's going to be pretty uncomfortable. Spotted their heavy cruisers. That means that the destroyers immediately have to turn a different direction. Because they are not ready for this. I want to eliminate their heavy cruiser. The one that I can see. Because without that heavy cruiser, the destroyers are going to have an easier time getting closer. Considering that these guys are packing 22 single 5-inch guns. Holy shit. That's a lot of guns. That is definitely not something you want to test with a destroyer. Also, two triple 9-inch guns. Uh, heavy cruisers, target that ship. My heavy cruisers only pack 7-inch guns, which have a range of 10 kilometers. We're going to need to get closer. Turn to starboard and push in. One percent accuracy. But as we're getting closer, I do expect this to start going up fairly soon. With the, the close engagement range, I'm already getting a pretty decent idea on the warship here. Oh, there's a destroyer. Casemates and secondaries on that. We have a range of 8.5, so the 5-inch guns are now opening up. Look at that. Casemates doing their level best to try and defeat the destroyers before they get close. Camera's not really working with me that well. Alright, main guns. On the heavy cruiser. Secondaries. Wipe out that destroyer. Or at least make its life very, very difficult. There we go. One hit. Mid-belt pen. And the DD does not appear to have a whole lot of bulkheads. Which she is starting to regret. Rudder limited. No hits there. Torpedoes in this era are pretty bad. Which means that I should be able to wipe this thing off the map before it launches torpedoes. Come on. Just to be sure, I will turn a little bit. Although it might make me vulnerable to their battleship. Have your cruisers to pitch in against the DD, please. More flooding on her. Heavy cruiser has been identified. Heavy cruiser to Alba. With maximum bulkheads. And tons and tons of fives. A pretty bad turning circle for a heavy cruiser. Anti-torp 3. Okay. There's another DD inbound. This one's almost down. That's a lot of torpedo tubes you got there. Try not to use them on me, if you will. Let's see if we can ID it before she goes down. There. Torpedo range 4-7. Visibility on torps is high because they're fasts. That's actually good. 
That's actually good. DDs, turn around. I wanted to clear out some of their secondary ships first. Before, I'm going to go up against the Aso, which we're going to say is the Congo. Chance to pen them is 29%. Chance to pen me is 25 So we're about even. And how good is their torpedo blister? Few bulkheads. Anti-torp 3. Turning circle 800 meters. With a ship that size, it's kind of what I was expecting. Because it's very, very long. It will not turn well. Unfortunately, it seems like the Alba is proving pretty difficult to hit. Switch fire to that ship. Let the heavy cruisers wipe out the Namikaze. Break formation and deal with the destroyer. We're going to have to shield the Arizona from torpedo impacts. Identification 100. They just launched torps. This is what I was worried about. Turn away. I could not kill the Arashi quickly enough, so she actually fired her torpedoes at me. Let's deal with the Asso. At least do some damage. Uh, we're going to fire high explosive shells because my chance to pen her is bad. Come on. This thing is taking a ton of damage. More flooding. This is when the 5-inch guns on the heavy cruisers come in particularly useful. There we go. That's one destroyer down. Next one is the Arashi. You guys are in range. Go to town. We've dodged the torpedoes. Time to turn back. I'm hoping that with the Asso's limited ability to control fires, I'll be able to put her aflame and then slowly but steadily wear her hit points down. Arizona so far has taken some damage, but is very capable of continuing the fight. The heavy cruisers are very, very much the focal point of the Japanese attack, which is good. I don't mind that. We're going to have to turn a bit more starboard, guys. Because all those casemate guns, all those fivers, fours, and threes don't work this well at this angle. The Arashi is still saving a single torpedo on her stern, but I think she's maneuvering so bad, or rather so much, that she's unable to bring that torpedo tube to bear. The ship outturns her torpedo launcher capability. Come on, there you go. One single hit of flooding. And immediately she starts slowing down. Easier to hit. Engine damaged. Another flooding. That's how I like to see the Japanese destroyers best. Burning, flooding and mostly dead. Arizona has come about and is coming back into the fight. My DDs are still awaiting their chance to strike at the battleship. Arashi, damage control ability is outstanding on these ships. Not so much their ability to take hits, but the rate at which they're countering that flooding is impressive. There's another DD out there. My turning circle is not great, but good enough, hopefully. Come on, this thing was... Almost gone. Now look at him. I'm going to turn the battleship back to port to prevent a torpedo attack from the destroyer there. How are we not hitting this thing? The Arashi's not even moving. She has three damaged engines. Yes, she's in a smokescreen, but she's a stationary target inside that smokescreen. Surely we can do better than this. There's a heavy cruiser. Oh, sorry, no, that's a light cruiser. The heavies have both been detected. This is getting pretty ridiculous. And I'm very concerned that the Arashi is going to torpedo again. She is targeting a heavy cruiser, though. 
There she goes. Finally. Next target. The Suzunami. Secondaries from all ships on that. Destroyers, await your turn. Oregon seems to have some problems after having been hit by a 13-inch shell from the Arso, their battleship. Range, six clicks out. Let's see if we can hit and eliminate the Takao over there. She does not carry torpedoes, but she is nevertheless a threat. Especially to my heavy cruisers. Come on, Suzunami, what's it, what's it going to be? What's your plan? Damage to the secondary tower. That's a start. Oh, there's the other one. Okay. There we go. One flooding on the Takao. Seems like the Asso has really not done that much damage. 300 points so far. Taking almost no damage. How good is your chance to pen? Because that must be pretty spectacular. No, not even. About 40% chance. But when she fires, she fires some large salvos at me. Look at that. That's 18 13-inch guns ready to kill me. Oh, this is not good. Flooding on the Norfolk. We've got the Chioda, which is armed with torpedoes. Better be careful with her. Get rid of that heavy cruiser. At 21 knots, I cannot exactly catch them either. Uh, now we're going to turn starboard. I'm going to turn bow in against the heavy cruisers and use the port side secondaries to work over the Suzunami. It will open me up to the battleship. That's an unfortunate side effect. But without my starboard turn, I would not be able to bring any of my secondaries, or at least very, very few of them, to bear against the destroyer. And I'm concerned about her ability to torpedo me. Could you guys deal with the light cruiser? Perhaps not. I'm going to split off the Milius. As well as the Tossig. You guys are going to turn that way. You guys are going to continue this way. I'm going to try and box in that battleship between... Ooh, between the two of us. Nice hit. Suzunami had her ammo detonated by one 5-inch shell. She was only hit three times out of almost 900 attempts. But one hit proved to be fatal. Takao is slowly but steadily starting to take some actual damage. And now I can also pepper them with the 5-inch guns. Which I doubt is going to do much damage, but any damage helps. So far I haven't lost any ships, but the heavy cruisers are starting to take a lot of hurt. Um, let's have you disengage from the fight. Let's have the battleship engage the heavy cruisers and eliminate those, or at least scare them away, so that my DDs have an easier time getting through there. It looks like the Takao is having some flooding issues. There's another flooding. Down to 20%. Couple more hits. Missed. Everything. Range, four clicks only. I'm going to have you guys engage the light cruiser there. Oh, the light cruiser has ceased firing because it does not have enough ammo. And you are the last of the destroyers. Interestingly. Six clicks out. That's what the heavy cruisers have selected as a target. That's a good pick. The DDs are closing in. They're eight clicks away from the battleship. Come on, sink the Takao. She does appear to be stationary. More flooding, this time on the bow. 
Two compartments on the bow. That's all of our engineering sections destroyed. Gone. Next is the Alba. We already had the guns over to starboard, so this should be fairly easy. Or at least I don't have to turn the whole ship around in order to get the guns to fire. Whoa. I did take a torp on the Arizona. From the Hamakaze. Oh. I was too focused on the heavy cruiser fight. I got exactly what I deserved. Come on, casemates. Kill that thing before it does that again. Smoke up on the DDs. Hard to starboard. Other DDs, hard to starboard. Heavy cruisers, deal with the Chioda. Lights or secondaries on the Hamakaze. Go. Arizona had a good torpedo blister. Oh, she's going to do it again. She had a good torpedo blister, so that damage was not completely mitigated, but definitely far less than it could have been. The Mertz is starting to take some serious damage, and so is the Milius. We're three clicks out. Please kill that DD. I really need my destroyers alive to hit that battleship with torpedoes. Range 6. I have a range of 4-8. The Williamson and the Tossig are still ready to fire. Fully healthy. Heavy cruisers? Not doing that bad. Not doing that bad. I thought they were nearly dead, but they... Uh, they seem to be doing okay. Whoa! Arizona just dodged another one. More by accident than actual effect. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's see if we can drop a salvo on the ASO. Yep, torpedoes away. Hamakaze. They do have hydro. Do you have hydro? You have hydro. That's interesting. They also has detected the torps. But you're a pretty big girl. Can you dodge? You just torpedoed a DD. That's uh, very optimistic. The spread looks decent. Also is turning to port to try and evade. But at this rate, she's not turning quickly enough. In the meanwhile, the Alba has been disengaging. We're going to hit two. Flooding. Hamakaze finally succumbs to her flooding. The heavy cruisers are working over the Chioda. Very good. Also, two damaged engines and serious flooding. Tulsig is still perfectly healthy. But she needs to reload her torpedoes. The Milius might be able to make her attack. Not yet. Tulsig, if you can attract some attention, that'd be great. Also, I was down to 39% buoyancy. And two damaged engines will see to that being... Well, very difficult to come back from. Not impossible, but at least difficult. Come on, can we please kill the Chioda? She shouldn't put it that much of a fight. Oh, and there's the other light cruiser. They're down to 20% buoyancy after getting hit by only two torpedoes. And with three damage engine compartments, that's... Well, it's not strictly a death sentence, but it's kind of going to lead to that. Slowly coming back. Ooh. You just took a couple of good chunks from the 13 inches on the also there. Milius, get into torpedo range. Norfolk sinks to heavy flooding. What? Fuck's sake, the Chioda had torpedoes. Oh well, secondary objective. I need to get revenge on the battleship. That's what we're here for. 
Revenge on the battleship. Chance to pen is still pretty bad. Melius is now starting to take some damage, but now I can smoke up. The 8-inch guns, casemates, on the also are starting to run low on ammo. Once again, though, as with previous scenarios, I'm running into the issue where the also has two damaged engines, effectively being a whole lot slower, but an effective rudder. And um, this is going to lead to these ridiculously good turning circles on enemy warships. Where they can pretty much turn on the spot. Tossig almost ready to fire again. Let's have the Milius launch her torpedoes. She is within range, 3.8. Tossig almost ready. Turn into the battleship. Officially, it should be Arizona that's going to go for a revenge, but I don't think the Arizona is going to be able to do that. Because she's going to very much struggle with penning. Milius has not launched torps yet. Tossig. Oh, heavy damage on Tossig. Torpedoes away. Only from one single launcher, though. There's the second spread. And of course, the also has detected those and is working to turn away from them. Oh, there's two spreads. Well, we're going to hit a few. Williamson, eager to go and hit the battleship as well. There's two torpedo hits. Yeah, all of those are going to miss. Tolsek, you can turn back. You have launched all your torpedoes. Wow, the Chioda is still alive? Okay, just ignore her for now. Arizona, increase the best speed. Tolsek, get out of here. Milius Williamson, you're up. I'm going to keep hitting this thing with torpedoes. Torpedoes away from Williamson. Three. Come on, where are your other spreads at? There. And there's another spread. It's going to make it difficult, if not impossible, for them to hit. Or for them to dodge. Well, I'd say that, but... That's well, going to be a hit on their stern. Flooding. Tossig, what are you doing? Melius, smoke up. And torpedo. We'll nail this guy between the four of us. We're going to need a few more torps. Oh, Melius paid for that attack. Also, once again, detecting torpedoes, trying to dodge, but with a damaged rudder, that's difficult. Hit. Hit, hit, four torpedoes. This is too much for her damage control parties to survive, and the Asso slips beneath the waves. Leaving the perfectly healthy Alba and the Chioda. Let's make sure we completely eliminate the Japanese group. There's also another light cruiser somewhere way up ahead. I want all the DDs to just leave the battlefield. I'm surprised that they're all still alive. And they have done formidable work. So they have earned a break from the battle. Let's see, we're firing at a light cruiser. But against the light cruiser, I only have a 60% chance to pen. Huh. Against their heavy, it's even worse. And these are... Firing heavy shells, right? Yeah. These are heavy 14-inch shells, but I'm struggling to pen a heavy cruiser. Interestingly. Look at that. Not only struggling to pen, I'm struggling to hit. Let's see, where are your torpedo tubes at? Good lord. Everywhere? Everywhere. Okay. 
So that means that I don't really want to get too close to her. Or if I am, I'm going to try and dodge as much as possible. High explosive shells only. That was a 14 inch that dealt 76 damage. Ah well. She just torpedoed the battleship. There they are. Turn, girl. Massive damage on the Chiyota this time around. That was a couple of good 14-inch hits. Sorry, no, it was one for 440 damage. Alba seems to be pretty done with this fight. She's also running out of 9-inch ammunition. Those torpedo launchers reload very quickly. 246 seconds, so a little over 4 minutes. All that they need to reload. That's very, very dangerous. Because she just repeated the battleship again. Arizona, time to turn again. Come on. It's gonna hit. Oh, shit. Tenryu. Hard to starboard. Oh, no. Tunnel vision. Move. <sighs> that was a lot closer than I would have wanted. I'm getting picked apart by two light cruisers, for crying out loud. The Oregon is starting to run extremely low. Her 4 inch are out of ammunition. Her 5 inch have plenty left, but will struggle to pen the Alba. Her 7 inches are running low. I could push in with the DD, but it's awfully slow. I think I might not be able to kill the entirety of the battle group here. Come on. There you go. Chioda's gonna torp me again. The amount of torpedoes that the Arizona is dodging is becoming alarming. Come on! Give me one 14 inch hit. Torpedo hit from the other side. Torpedo blister holding. Do I have a DD that I can send against him? Not the Tosig. Maybe the Milius. There's more. How many do they still have? They have 18 more torpedoes. Dance, baby, dance. We're going to be dodging torpedoes for the rest of the day here. There's more from the Chioda. Thankfully, Chioda is running low on torps. I'm turning so much that it's becoming difficult for my guns to keep up with the turns. Oregon. Seems fine. Arizona once again under torpedo attack. Chioda is almost ready to launch again. Go on. There we go. Torpedoes have been launched by Chioda. Speed on the Arizona is a mere 7 knots. Guns forward. Steady as she goes. There's the torpedo. She still has 4 loaded. Come on. She ought to run out of ammo for 10 times underwater torpedo launcher. So she just launched whatever she had left. There it is. That's gonna hurt. Or is it? Oh, oh. Yeah, I survived. Okay, I will now kill you. Slowly. Uh, I had ADD, the Milius, I think. 
moving in to deal with that light cruiser. The Tenryu does not really have good ability to deal with 7-inch guns against me, because she doesn't have that much ammo, but her 3-inch armor, or 3-inch complement is all the more concerning. Her turning circle is terrible, though. But these things are very difficult to kill. There we go. Arizona is getting some revenge for all the torpedo attacks that the Chioda has undertaken. We're only getting effective hits at around 1,500 meters. There she goes. Chioda's down. Milius? I know you're very much hurting. I think Tenryu just broke out of the formation with the death of her sister ship. Thankfully, I still have plenty of ammunition. Williamson disengaging, good. For some reason, the three inchers are not engaging yet. If I send torpedoes out, the ship's going to turn to starboard. Which is not where I want her. I'm just going to let the Alba slip away. Not until... Oi! Rude. Uh, I'm going to let the Alba slip away. Not entirely by my choice. But I do need her to tell the story of what the Arizona did. I need the Japanese to know that the Arizona is back. Now the Milius has been killed, but not before dealing a crippling blow to the Tenryu. She's going to be very much hurting and unable to get up to any kind of speed. But she doesn't need to. Because she can still lob torpedoes at the Arizona. This really is a death by a thousand five inch cuts. And no, don't go to... That's what she said. That'd be terrible. Oregon, <laughs> out of 7 inch, out of 4 inch. 3 inches are running fairly low, but 5 inch still have ammo. Tenryu, officially in torpedo range. Cross-eyed gunners. Go on. One good salvo. Yes. That's the thing that I needed. Flooding. She's down to 7%, 5%, 3%. Gone. Enemy smoke spotted to the south. And that's the Alba. I'll let her slip away. She has been witness to what happened here. And she knows that the Arizona is back. She's a bit wounded. But especially considering that her deck was almost flooded in Pearl Harbor... Um, I'd say this is just a bit of scratch. We'll be fine. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the battle. Let me know what your thoughts are down below. And I shall see you guys soon for more battles.